Hello and welcome back, Steven here. And we're back in Apache NiFi and using our aviation data flow that we've been using the last couple of videos. We have a couple more things we can do in here. So let's go ahead and get back to it. So as you remember before, we've been using our aviation stack API to get flight data for real-time flight information and been making a couple, utilizing a lot of different uh, processors. In this case, uh, for this video, we're not gonna utilize a processor. Uh, we're going to utilize a new functionality or a different functionality inside of DiFi, which is the parameter contents or parameters themselves. So you've probably seen hints of it before. So if we go and we look at something like, a, uh, let's look at this one right here. So we'll disable this convert. All right. So inside of here, parameters can be used in just about everything for properties. So if we go and look at the schema here, we can see when we open a property, the property tells us that we have the ability to use that expression language is supported for DiFi, as well as the parameter support is there too. They both both have a check mark there. So we can utilize either one. So where this becomes very helpful is, uh, my favorite way to use them is uh, endpoints for APIs. So a nice one would be you go into the API, and honestly, we've we've already taken a lot of this API string and use expression language because we're bringing in the generate flow file from there, and we're bringing in we're using the expression language to create these placeholders. But we can actually uh, one way I like to use it is for the endpoint itself. Uh, it's not uncommon, especially in a business environment, to have endpoints go down for maintenance reasons where they're being updated for the backend and stuff, or uh, you just have one that goes down, you gotta switch over to another one maybe. So having a way to quickly change these from one area that could, and you could be using this same endpoint, uh, at least the same endpoint for here, this part of it could be the same for maybe multiple processors that you have. And it's really time consuming to go in there and have to change every single one. Uh, and it can be pretty drastic as well as uh, that downtime that's impacting you now can cost you severely depending on what those processors are doing for you. So we could parameterize this part. Uh, we could also use it inside of our, say, uh, put statements. We could use it for our SQL server as well. So if we go into that and we follow that one, We'll go ahead and disable this one for right now so that we can see it. And inside of the properties list here for that, we can go ahead and look at the connection URL. So the URL most likely doesn't change very often. That means we can go ahead and use parameters because it does accept them as well as, as the expression language. Now, expression language is not something I want to use in here, but parameters would be something I wouldn't mind. And we could have a parameter for both the IP and the port itself. Granted, I've never come across very many instances where both those change or even the port ever changes. But it's very possible that we could start off with one server and maybe we set up parameters so that we can have parameters that are, are testing or development parameters for maybe this IP we could create this IP could be our testing environment right and once we're done testing our stuff we want to start setting that data into we don't start switching over things to the production environment so primers are very helpful there so let's go ahead and see how we create them cancel that let's turn that one back on and get it running again uh, we want to do everything we turned off All right, even so let's jump inside of here, back inside our aviation data flow. And from here, let's go ahead and look at a couple of things really quick for the user guide for Apache DiFi. So I'll jump on over there. Inside of user guide, you have a section for parameters. And there's a couple of things we need to keep in mind. So parameters are sensitive prop they uh, a sensitive property can only reference a sensitive parameter. So secrets can only reference secrets. <laughs> Uh, a non-sensitive property can only reference a non-sensitive parameter. Uh, properties that re reference controller services cannot use parameters or properties. And then uh, parameters cannot be referenced 
in reporting tasks or in controller levels, controller services. And then there's some more information down here, a little walkthrough on all the stuff, but uh, that's there available if you want it from the user guide. So how do we just get to this and get it started here? Well, you go over here to your menu and you pick parameter contacts. And then we go ahead and we want to create a NiFi parameter contacts. So we go ahead and create one, give it a name. We'll call this one uh, Aviation Flow. And I don't need a description for this. So I'll go ahead and hit apply. So there we go. We have a context now. Now, these are global. So if I go out of here, one thing I need to do now is I need to assign a primary context to my processor group. So here we are inside of the, from the NI5 flow root, we're at aviation data. So we go settings or configure general and then back here we have processor group primary context so we can pick from here our list or we can create a new one if we want as well so aviation data flow so when you create parameter context the context themselves are global so i can go ahead and hit apply here and it will start using that that primary context will now be available to this processor group but if i come back out here and i say create a new group right test oops. oh man group <laughs> and I go inside this one we can go ahead and configure it as well and we can see the aviation flow is still available to this one as well so your group your contexts like we said are available globally now keeping in mind that one processor group can only be assigned one parameter context at a time. So you'll want to think about how are you going to utilize them and what you're going to do with them ahead of time. Go ahead and get rid of that group and we'll go back to our aviation data. Inside of our aviation data though, we need to do something with those. So let's go ahead and go back to our global settings here, parameter context. Now we can edit this one and we can see we have no parameters on our list. We have a name and a value column, but nothing in there. So we can go and nothing's referencing anything right now. We can go ahead and create one if we wanted to and say, uh, we'll go ahead and make this the aviation stack API, our aviation stack end point. Uh, we don't have a value for it right now. So let's go ahead and apply that. Let's go get that value. As you see, we made an update, so let's go ahead and set them that up. And let's go back into the, there we go. And our endpoint is, this will be flights. Let's go back in there now, change the context, edit that again. In this case, I actually want to make a change to this. Um, I want to create a new one and aviation stack endpoint and we'll call this flights or flight We can give it a value now it's not sensitive so we're not going to check that there we go so this is calling on the api the endpoint for the flights api and that's what we're doing here Apply that, go ahead and get rid of the one we didn't use, apply here, and you can see it's stopping processors, disabling them, uh, updating the context, and then it's re-enabling everything. So how do we use it now? Well, let's go back into the API here, or the invoke processor, and we're gonna use it here. Now, you call on them differently than you do uh, attributes, attributes used a dollar sign and brackets. Here, if we look in here, we can see after beginning with the start delimiter, we, the hashtag, we can use the keystroke control space to bring up a list of parameters if we want as well. 
One other thing to keep in mind is when you don't have one, actually it may not trigger correctly without the spacer. Control space, it automatically populates with the very first one because that's all we have in there. So I don't even get a list to pick from <laughs> in this case right now because we don't have any more. So there we go. We've put in our parameter there. It's highlighted purple, it's not blue like our expression language is. And we can see that it's there. So let's go ahead and test this one out and see if it works. Turn that one back on. And we will start it, stop. There you go, one flew through, we got 72 that are processing out of the 100 already, and it worked, which is very cool. Now, what else can we do with this? Well, you can create them from the menu we were doing before, just out of primary context and going to that, uh, that context and adding new ones there. You can also do it from inside. So now that we've assigned the, gotta zoom out here. Okay, now that we've assigned the context to this processor group. We can go ahead and look at some stuff here. So if I go into say generate flow file, properties now have this little arrow on the side of them and it says convert to parameter. So this is another way you can create a parameter. I can go ahead and say, take my access, access key here. I can say convert, oh, actually I don't wanna do this one because it doesn't give me the option to make it sensitive. So let's do flight status. There we go, flight status, got the add parameter option here, and I can go so apply. I can do my limit as well. Say apply there. And our three properties that, that were generating this flow file, two of them have been parameterized. And we would do this one, but we'd have to go create it ourselves manually. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's go and create another manual one again. Call this. Oh, I didn't give those good names too. <laughs> Forgot to name them with my. Uh, this will be key, uh, API key. Okay, so I guess it's sensitive, so we can do it here. We just couldn't do the sensitive one the other way. Apply it, and there we go. We can see it has a sensitive value set option in there. We can edit it, we don't see it anymore, but it's there. Let's go ahead and test this to make sure all this stuff works. Get it turned on again. So first thing we need to do is go back in here and delete this one, start the parameter. Now if we do control spacebar, we see we have the list here, right? So we can go ahead and pick one. Okay, so, oh, right, <laughs> remembering the rules, right? So we made it sensitive as a parameter, but we can't do that because it's not a sensitive parameter, right? So this was actually a bad way of doing it. We want to take that one. So it's not a sensitive parameter or property. And like the rule said, right, we can only do sensitive on sensitive. So in this case, we have to delete this one, create a new one. Give the value, don't make it sensitive. And there we go. So that one's set up there. Uh, it would be nice to fix these, but we'll leave them alone for right now. We just know. The only, they do work, but I didn't name them the way I wanted them. Apply it, let it reset everything real quick and apply them. Close it and we're good there. We can go back to our flow file that we're creating here. We can delete that and now we can, oh, we can go ahead and uh, set it up. Control spacebar again, API key is there. I can select that one, close it and it's done. The other one's already done because we made them from here. We can apply that there. And now we have a difference here that we need to fix. So the values are no longer, well, actually, they're still the same. We don't have to change this one. This one's fine. 
because in this case we are so normally you wouldn't be using the <laughs> the uh generate flow file to in most cases you're not using it to access your api i'm just using it as a way to control the api uh, or how many times we're flowing things through there. We could do it through the API itself or the invoke itself processor, but we don't need to. But in this case, uh, I could just populate this entire thing with the uh, information as well and use parameters all the way through this, but we're not going to. We're going to see that these are going to get fed because if we look here, we'll stop this one. Now when we create a flow file and look at the values there, I not see that one? Okay, well, let's go ahead and pass it through. Okay, so it worked, it went through, new ones were created, and we'll just, well, there it is right there. Oh, <laughs> my bad, <laughs> I was, uh, I forgot all about what we were doing here. So the reason why is uh, we go ahead and start that again, stop it. I forgot, we're not making content, context over there, or content. We're actually doing the attributes, right? So we can see the attributes did work, and the parameters are working themselves as well. So we can have our access key here, we have our limit, and we have our flight status for active. So those are all working there, uh, which is excellent. So this is a really good way to swap between uh, endpoints. So like, if all of a sudden I was like, okay, well, you know what, we built this, uh, we've been targeting our API for, uh, I know some environments have themselves dev APIs and then they have the production API, right? So I would go in here, I would go ahead and go back to my parameters now and we're done testing or developing. So let's go ahead and switch this over and change the value here of our import or uh, the best way to do it would be to just create another one and call this one Aviation stack, mm, call it prod. Oh man, my typing is not good today. In point, and dot flight, there you go. And I would have my value populated in there and that would be it. So now all I would have to do is go ahead and just, when I'm ready, go into the invoke itself and change it here and swap it out for the other. Uh, or it could just be that you want to, now granted, that means if I did it that way, I'd have to go to every single one and change all those processors. But I find that more valuable just to use the same one and swap out the values now, right? Give it the value of my prod or my development and there we go now when i apply that all five or six different invokes that i have that all target that same endpoint would all get swapped out so there you go that's how you that's uh this, this is how you can use parameters and it's very helpful i mean really most cases you probably want to use it every chance you can get right just like expression language any chance you can get away from using it to take care of some stuff or it makes sense you want to use it there Anytime you're pointing to say endpoints, URLs and stuff like that, stuff that can be parameterized or that could swap, that you might want to swap out and not have to go through every single parameter uh, to go or every property on every single processor and go swap it out. This gives you a way to get around that and not have to do all that extra work. And in events of where you go down, your process goes down, it gives you quick ways to quickly restore them and get them back up and running. All right. Any questions, definitely feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it is helpful. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.